Cal Newport, A World Without Email, Reimagining Work in an Age of Communication Overload. Welcome to the exciting journey of reimagining work in an age of communication overload, as presented in Cal Newport's book, A World Without Email. In this summary, you'll explore key concepts like hyperactive hive, mind workflow, attention capital, and the psychological toll heavy email usage takes on employees. You'll also discover how optimizing workflows, creating better coordination protocols, and implementing specialized production processes bring about higher productivity and reduce stress in the workplace. Get ready to envision more efficient and focused work environments as you step into a world without email. The Hyperactive Hive Mind Over-reliance on email communication is causing the hyperactive hive mind workflow. It compels employees to continuously check their inboxes, resulting in diminished productivity. The human brain, specifically the prefrontal cortex, can only focus on a single task at a time. However, the hyperactive hive mind workflow requires multitasking, proving detrimental to overall productivity. Most employees believe that there is no other option besides email correspondence, even though it hinders their performance. Sean's small tech firm was spiraling into a productivity disaster. It all started with email addiction, where all work activities were handled through inboxes. They then introduced the instant messaging tool Slack, which only amplified the chaos. Clients could now bombard the employees with inquiries at any time. Consequently, tasks that should have been completed during the day spilled into the night, with hardly any meaningful work achieved. This scenario is not uncommon in the modern workplace, enter the hyperactive hive mind workflow. With never-ending digital discussions determining daily tasks, email ends up stunting productivity. Knowledge workers check their inboxes roughly every six minutes, devoting more than a third of their time at work to them. Yet the problem escalates further. In 2018, a study conducted by software company RescueTime monitored computer usage among 50,000 active users. Results suggested that an average knowledge worker achieved only an hour and 15 minutes of uninterrupted productive work per day. This lack of productivity is rooted in the human brain's capability for concentration. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for attention, can only focus on one task at a time, whereas the hyperactive hive mind workflow demands multitasking. The continuous task switching results in longer task completion times, ultimately affecting overall individual efficiency. Poor productivity is an evident downside of email, but many employees believe that remaining responsive to their teams is of greater importance. This common misconception underscores the need for a change in mindset and openness to exploring more efficient modes of communication at work. Email, efficiency or distraction. While email is often seen as an efficient method of communication, particularly in workplace settings, it can disrupt focus, hindering productivity and creativity. In fact, both managers and support staff can greatly benefit from uninterrupted periods of focused work for tackling sequential tasks and long-term goals. Alternative solutions, such as ticketing systems, can help streamline communication without becoming a source of constant distraction. On a casual hike, the author and his management consultant friend engage in a debate about email and its impact on the workplace. The friend argues that email promotes efficiency, enabling quick problem solving and maintaining the flow of tasks. Many might agree with this view, fearing that without email, workplace productivity would stagnate. However, the essential point here is that a ceaseless influx of emails does not truly serve any workplace. For professionals in all fields, concentrated periods of undisturbed work are vital for fostering creative and focused thinking. This is undeniably true for writers, programmers, and scientists, but it is equally important for managers, who need to address long-term strategic objectives without being constantly drawn into immediate concerns. Furthermore, administrative or logistical support staff, who might seem to thrive within a responsive email culture, are also better served by concentrating on tasks rather than communication. Communicating about tasks often stands in opposition to actually accomplishing them. 
the history of IT support offers a clear example of this phenomenon. Initially, IT departments faced a never-ending influx of calls and emails containing tech complaints. This onslaught of communication left IT staff with less time to address the actual issues. Gradually, IT departments adopted ticketing systems, automating the process of requesting assistance and allowing IT professionals to concentrate on resolving problems. This shift demonstrates that alternative solutions to email can be more effective, streamlining communication without impeding productivity. Email Hazards, Stress and Job Dissatisfaction Gloria Mark's revealing study in 2016 demonstrated a direct correlation between email usage and mental stress among knowledge workers. Beyond causing stress, the constant stream of communication impacts overall job satisfaction and a company's bottom line. Emails exploit the brain's desire for social connection, creating anxiety when we're unable to attend to our inboxes, which in turn affects job performance and employee retention. Solutions like predictable time off can contribute to improving employee well-being and satisfaction, stressing the need for a better, sustainable alternative to email. When informatics expert Gloria Mark and her team studied 40 knowledge workers by monitoring their heart rates and computer usage, they found a significant relationship between email usage and stress levels. It was clear that spending more time attending to emails within an hour heightened the workers' stress during that time. The hyperactive hive mind workflow powered by email not only induces stress but also has a severe impact on job satisfaction. Harvard Business School professor Leslie Perlow's study illustrated the benefits of implementing predictable time off, PTO, a system allowing employees specific periods free from communication channels like emails and phone calls. The introduction of PTO significantly boosted excitement towards work in the morning and increased employee retention rates within the company. One primary reason why email causes distress is rooted in the brain's inherent need for social connection. Emails inadvertently trigger the anxiety of neglecting social connections. This concern dates back to humanity's hunter-gatherer days when relationships were directly tied to survival and access to resources. Consequently, this anxiety becomes a constant nagging presence in our lives. Email has evolved into an omnipresent element of our daily routines, blurring the lines between work and relaxation. Our minds perceive an overflowing inbox as a matter of life and death, prompting the urgent need for a more effective and balanced solution. Boosting Productivity with Attention Capital the revolutionary Ford Model T and its assembly line offer valuable insights for optimizing modern workplaces. By transitioning from the hyperactive hive mind and focusing on attention capital, businesses can amplify their productivity and profits. A shift in mindset and adoption of workflows that encourage single-tasking and organization can unlock the true potential of human brains, as demonstrated by a small marketing firm success story. The innovative design of Ford Motor Company's Model T captured the attention of people in 1908. However, the assembly line process introduced by Henry Ford in 1913 was what truly revolutionized the way factories functioned. Ford's idea was simple, move cars between workers during assembly, with each worker focusing on one specific part of the car. This sparked a groundbreaking change in production. Drawing inspiration from this innovation, Modern workplaces need a radical shift to optimize their workflows, maximize productivity, and enhance profits. The central idea is to alter the mindset towards a workflow that is finely tuned for the human brain. In Ford's era, materials and equipment were the primary capital resources responsible for creating value. The assembly line's efficiency allowed it to generate much more value from these resources than the earlier methods. However, in today's knowledge sector, the primary capital resource is attention capital, meaning the mental capacity of workers that companies rely on for value creation. The current hyperactive hive mind workflow yields weak returns from this vital resource. Alternative workflows can significantly amplify attention capital and increase productivity. A case study illustrating this involves Devesh, an entrepreneur running a small marketing firm. Initially, the firm operated on a hyperactive hive mind workflow, but Devesh decided to abandon this approach and adopt a new workflow focused on an online project management tool. 
the tool allowed users to create shared pages called boards for individual projects, with each board containing all the necessary files, tasks, notes, and discussions. This new workflow outperforms the hyperactive hive mind for several reasons. Firstly, it promotes single tasking over multitasking, ensuring employees don't lose focus due to an overwhelming inbox. Secondly, the neatly organized project boards make the workflow more efficient. Devesha's marketing firm showcases how optimizing workflows for attention capital can yield remarkable results. The following sections will delve deeper into the process of implementing these effective strategies. Enhancing Workplace Workflow Peter Drucker's theory of autonomy revolutionized management by recognizing that knowledge workers need the freedom to operate independently. However, the challenge lies in maintaining productivity without micromanaging. By involving employees in improving work execution, employers can create better workflows that promote efficiency and maintain autonomy. Simultaneously, individually altering expectations can influence coworkers' attitudes and contribute to a more effective work environment. Peter Drucker had an enormous impact on the business world as the founder of modern management, shaping the way we approach knowledge work. He theorized that knowledge workers thrive on autonomy and the freedom to achieve their goals without being oversupervised. Although modern managers respect employee creativity and independence, finding a balance between autonomy and productivity can be challenging. The solution lies in establishing efficient workflows rooted in both teamwork and individual responsibility. When refining workflows, one must consider work execution and expectations. Work execution encompasses employees performing tasks, and altering it usually involves embracing different systems and tools. For instance, replacing traditional email with project management platforms like Trello or Flow may streamline communication and collaboration. Involving employees in the decision-making process when adjusting work execution is crucial, as it revolves around the psychological theory of locus of control. Workers who feel they have control over their workflow are typically more motivated to engage and follow through with it. So, as a manager or executive, ensure your team understands the drawbacks of the hyperactive hive mind work mentality and encourage them to develop new workflow ideas collaboratively. Simultaneously, adjusting expectations involves individual actions that influence coworkers' attitudes. For example, Limiting email checking to specific times throughout the day could lead coworkers to modify their expectations regarding your response time. Surprisingly, it's best not to broadcast personal workflow adjustments, as coworkers may feel limited by your changes and don't have a say in them. Instead, focus on consistently meeting your objectives without explaining how you're achieving them. In conclusion, the key to balancing employee autonomy and productivity is to create better workflows that empower both the team and the individual. Adopting new systems and platforms, involving employees in the decision-making process, and gradually updating personal habits can lead to a more efficient and harmonious work environment. Maximize attention with structured processes. Imagine the endless back and forth of emails, where responsibility bounces between inboxes until a manager intervenes. Such scenarios are common in the hyperactive hive mind workflow but are highly inefficient, wasting your company's attention capital. Structured production processes clarify who should be working on what and when, freeing employees to do crucial work instead of merely discussing it. Organized processes can be automatic or unstructured, depending on the nature of the work. For instance, media production might use a shared spreadsheet to coordinate tasks, while a high-level manager might employ an online collaboration tool to monitor projects and schedule FaceTime meetings. By providing solid structure and clear guidelines, these processes reduce unnecessary communication, allowing everyone to focus on tasks that genuinely matter. Balancing Coordination Protocols in the modern workspace, employees communicate about various topics such as scheduling meetings, projects, and feedback. Coordination protocols, ways to structure communication, have costs that should be carefully considered and optimized. Measuring the cognitive cycle cost of a protocol is essential as it represents the attention fragmentation caused by these protocols. Additionally, 
the level of inconvenience also plays a crucial role, as it includes factors like delays and special effort. Striking the right balance between cognitive cycle costs and inconvenience is important, and tweaking chosen protocols to find the best balance is essential in improving productivity within the workspace. No matter the work environment, daily communication comprises various tasks, such as answering queries, offering feedback, and scheduling meetings. In the contemporary workspace, adopting coordination protocols, effective methods for structuring communication, is critical. Analyzing and optimizing the associated costs of such protocols can lead to improved productivity. To evaluate coordination protocol costs, one must examine cognitive cycle costs, or the level of attention fragmentation elicited by each protocol. Consider an employee's attention span as divided into five-minute buckets. The number of these buckets dedicated to a specific coordination task represents its cognitive cycle cost. For example, imagine a consulting firm assessing potential new clients using the hyperactive hive mind process, employees exchange dozens of emails about each client. Writing and responding to emails can consume several five-minute buckets, leading to a high cognitive cycle cost for this particular protocol. Alternatively, imagine conducting a 30-minute weekly meeting as the coordination protocol. With only six buckets consumed weekly, it has a lower cognitive cycle cost. However, other factors must also be considered, most notably, inconvenience costs. Inconvenience costs account for protocols that may produce extensive delays, demand significant effort, or result in missed opportunities. In the hypothetical consulting firm example, the hyperactive hive mind protocol is more convenient, as sending and replying to emails is swift. In contrast, the meeting protocol, where employees have to wait until Friday, generates a higher inconvenience cost, creating potentially lengthy delays for clients. Ultimately, it's crucial to find the right balance between cognitive cycle and inconvenience costs. Upon selecting a suitable protocol, don't hesitate to adapt and refine it. For instance, if the meeting protocol is chosen, implementing a standard operating procedure could help in reassuring clients they'll receive a response within a week, minimizing inconvenience, improving the overall balance, and preventing potential loss of business. Boost productivity with specialization. When personal computers entered the workplace in the 1980s, the expectation was that they would lead to a significant productivity boost. However, what appeared to be an increase of more than 116% in investments per worker only led to a 2.2% increase in output. Technology historian Edward Tenner attributes this to computers making tasks just easy enough for skilled professionals to handle them instead of dedicated support staff. The solution to this problem lies in the specialization principle, reducing administrative burdens on highly skilled employees allows for higher quality work and increased productivity. Organizations can apply the specialization principle by hiring more support staff. Although this might require an upfront cost, the long-term payoff is increased productivity and profits. Economist Peter G. Sassoni notes that some organizations could reduce their overall staffing costs by 15% simply by hiring more support staff. This shifts the responsibility of dealing with administrative tasks away from highly skilled employees, allowing them to focus on the core tasks that generate value for the company. If you don't have the influence in your organization to hire more staff, an alternative solution could be hiring a part-time virtual assistant using platforms like Upwork. As a last resort, you can also create your own support staff by dividing your workday into separate time blocks dedicated to specialist and support tasks. For instance, designating specific hours for addressing administrative issues and dedicating the rest of your work hours to tasks that require your specialized skills. By implementing a clear division between specialist and support tasks, you can promote increased efficiency, focus, and performance. Taking the time to fully concentrate on high-value projects leads to a better quality of work, compared to constantly juggling tasks in a multitasking frenzy. By applying the specialization principle and intelligently reallocating resources based on job roles, organizations can unlock the full potential offered by advances in technology and significantly increase productivity.
In conclusion, Cal Newport's A World Without Email highlights the significant drawbacks of our constant reliance on email and the detrimental impact it has on productivity and job satisfaction. Shifting away from the hyperactive hive mind workflow and optimizing workflows with tools like project management software can help us unleash our true productivity potential. By carefully weighing the costs associated with coordination protocols and embracing the specialization principle, organizations can reap the benefits of increased efficiency, heightened focus, and happier employees. With this knowledge, we can embark on a journey towards a more focused and efficient work environment free from the stress and distraction caused by email.